Coming up next on Community Connections, I talk to Tara Rose, the coordinator of our Tripoli program here in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Greetings, I'm Shannon Pugh, the Director of Community and School-Based Programs, and, and I want to welcome you to this edition of Community Connections. Today, we are excited to be joined by AACPS Tripoli staff to discuss the history of Tripoli and two of our Tripoli disciplines, world culture and language and global studies. So first of all, welcome uh, to Tara Rose. And so can you please tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your journey in AACPS? Sure. So I've been with Anne Arundel County Public Schools for 27 years now. I spent the first 20 years as a teacher in the classroom. I taught pre-K, kindergarten, first and second grade. And then I decided I needed something different. And that's where Triple E came into my life. So I was the Triple E teacher at Van Bachlen for mm -hmm. three years. And then for the past four years, I've been leading this wonderful program. Awesome. So let's Help. start with the history. So let's start with the letters. Triple okay. E, what does it stand for? Enhancing Elementary Excellence. Uh -huh. um, so when we think about that, um, we know that we need our students to attain certain standards at different grade levels. So our Triple E focus is taking those big standards and focusing on how we can help enhance what they're doing in the classrooms. So thing, things that we can do to support teachers with developing those content standards, but in a different way through project-based learning. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and so tell me a little bit about the inception of Tripoli. How long has it been around? Oh, goodness. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, well, Tripoli started as a pilot in 2014. Okay. We had eight schools and nine very eager teachers to get <laughs> <laughs> getting ready. Um, so that was the North County feeder that we started in. Uh -huh. And over the years, we expanded to different clusters. Uh -huh. But then of course, COVID came and we haven't expanded in a while, but last year we expanded to our last 25 schools yeah. and onboarded our last 43 teachers. And so now we're happy to be in every elementary school. Awesome. So I do know that uh, that was a priority of Dr. Bedell last mm -hmm. year is getting to make sure that Tripoli is in every single school. One of the things that we know is Tripoli is another opportunity during the week for our teachers to have some collaboration and professional uh, time. Which is so needed. Yeah, absolutely. And under Blueprint, uh, we, we get to uh, provide even more time for teachers. So this is definitely in that direction of meeting that Blueprint goal. Uh, but this is about more than just another time for someone else to have planning and professional opportunities. So tell me about about Tripoli in, in the school, what, what does it do for our kids? Um, in our global studies schools, uh, they're really thinking about world issues and how to solve problems. Um, when I say world issues, I know that's a, a big thing, but even to children mm -hmm. having an issue in the cafeteria and how to solve problems um, and be a communicator and work together to solve mm -hmm. problems is a big thing. Um, teaching them about taking responsibility for their actions. Mm -hmm. So going out into the community and trying to uh, make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our projects have uh, community connections where they're um, learning about different communities and foods that they might eat. Mm -hmm. So one of our projects, a connection would be in third grade, they um, create a food truck. Uh -huh. So they explore different uh, countries, what kind of foods do they eat, you know, the climate, all these things. And then they develop a menu uh -huh. and um, they share it with others. They even build a replica of a food truck with the menu and everything and they get to share it with others. So uh, I know that there are four themes yes. that we have in Anne Arundel County uh, and they are STEM. Talk me through, talk me through all STEM four. STEM in society, mm -hmm. global studies, mm -hmm. world culture and language, mm -hmm and arts and humanities. All right, so a lot of different opportunities. Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, for kids, so are do we put all of those themes like in one feeder, or are they spread around the county? Tell me a little bit about that. So our world culture and language classes will be in PYP schools, some of our PYP schools, and then the rest are spread out through, throughout each feeder. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit more about Global Studies. So okay. tell us uh, that Tripoli Global Studies. You've given us a little bit of a hint already, but uh, okay. how many how many schools have Global oh, Studies? Goodness. Or as an example of some of the other uh, opportunities for students in that class? Um, so in Global Studies, um, one of the modules that's coming to uh, to mind is when we think about solving real world problems, we uh, pose the problem of fresh drinking water to our students. Uh -huh. So this is a fourth grade module. Okay. Um, and it is called Water Harvesters. Mm -hmm. So students learn about um, communities that might not have access to drinking water or they have to walk miles to mm -hmm. get drinking water and bring it back and how you know we're so lucky to turn on our faucet and we have running water. Um, so they learn about creating a water harvesting system mm -hmm. and then they collaborate together to build this harvesting system. Uh -huh. And then some schools even invite the community in and they'll have a whole showcase, like an evening community event uh -huh. where students stand with their replica and they uh, talk about how it will function mm -hmm. and how it will filter the water and make it better for a community to have drinking water. So that's something that we could actually make connections to really all over the globe because we can yes. even think about you know, water uh, issues in you know, Flint, Michigan or, or some other yes. places, not just in other, other countries. But Correct. global studies, do we, do we take the kids like around the world to different regions or are they just these themes and topics that we're able to just well, we make take global? them around the world. Talk to me a little bit about oh that. Gosh. <laughs> well, there's a lot of choice that comes with Triple E. Uh -huh. So uh, the teacher may pose, you know, uh, multiple countries and that's where the, the collaboration and the teamwork comes into play because if I'm working with two other people, we have to come to an agreement on this is the country we want to choose to yeah. learn about. And then that drives, you know, the research piece, mm -hmm. finding out more about the country. And, um, and then that just leads them through the inquiry process. And depending on what the end product is, mm -hmm. it's not always just about water harvesters, but yeah. depending on what the end product is, um, they use all those details that they learn in research mm -hmm. and create something valuable. Yeah. yeah. So that sounds like it definitely helps support our students and mm -hmm. our uh, blueprint goals about being college, career, and community ready. Do you want to uh, highlight a few other things that you think really fit into that goal about being college and career and community ready? So I feel like our program in general supports lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. We want students to look at problems and be able to solve them. Yeah. And again, it might right now just be the cafeteria problem that they're trying to solve and advocate for, but that really gives them practice mm -hmm. for later in life when they have that job, when they're ready for that career, and they have to interact with others to solve problems, mm -hmm. or maybe they need to stand up and advocate for something that they're really passionate about. So it really does give them skills that they can have for a lifetime. So when I think about uh, that every student in the school takes uh, takes the Triple E class, which is a great opportunity, what might something look like uh, if I'm a pre if I'm in pre-K at a school versus when I'm in fifth grade? Take me through just a couple of examples of they would do this in pre-K and then this as they're older. I love that you asked that <laughs> because uh, we just had an opportunity to revamp what our pre-K three and four year olds are doing. And we really um, want to set them up for success in project-based learning. But we also know that they're three and four years old. <laughs> so we start off with a very sensory, um, we work on fine motor, gross motor. We even incorporate a social emotional piece mm -hmm. into our three and four year old curriculum. And then by kindergarten, we're ready for smaller duration project slices. Okay where um, students will be engaged over maybe a six week period mm -hmm. with a project um, and not as repetitive as it is in pre-K. You know, we're just trying to get them acclimated to that, um, that thinking out of side of the box. And then in first grade, from first through fifth, the projects just grow and they deepen. Mm -hmm. So we really want um, that research component. We want students to be thinking 
even beyond, you know, like how does this impact me in the classroom mm -hmm. or even taking it home, but then into the community and how it can you know, go beyond our schools and our communities. So thinking about global studies, what's your favorite uh, oh. unit or project? Gosh, that they do? that's so hard. Um, let me think. There is a second grade one that I think is pretty interesting. So it's called Galimotos. Oh, okay. You know what a Galimoto is? I have no idea oh. what a Galimoto is. Well, we challenge our students to learn what a Galimoto is, which is a toy. Okay. Um, they, uh, the end result is students create toys for others. Uh -huh. but they actually make them out of wire. Okay. And then they get to share it. Um, with others at the end. That sounds great. So I'm that creativity. Find, find out what a Galimoto is. I am. I'm going to look <laughs> up what a Galimoto <laughs> is. So we're going to take a short break, during which time I might look up what a Galimoto is. But when we return, Tara and I will continue our triple E discussion and hear from some of the AACPS awesome students that we have. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Bedell, and I am proud to be the superintendent of Anne Arundel County Public Schools a district of 85,000 students and 14,000 dedicated employees. We are on our way to be in the best school system in Maryland, and we could use your help to get there. Consider one of these many careers with us. So what are you waiting for? Apply today and help students like these be AACPS Awesome! Welcome back. We're going to switch gears and talk about Triple E World Culture and Language. So what types of things do students learn in, in schools that have that theme for Triple E? So world culture and language can be found in some of our PYP schools, mm -hmm. where language is a focus, obviously. Some of the languages that we um, support are Mandarin, mm -hmm. um, French, Spanish, and German. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and Italian. And I Italian. Can't forget Italian. <laughs> but in our world culture and language class, uh -huh. they're introduced to people in places around the world uh -huh. through fun experiences, projects, and we always make a language connection. And I know that uh, one of the inter interesting things that I've recently learned about thinking about IB and PYP and some of those is that uh, the intent is that almost every student is learning a new language. And so it's not just looking at the school saying, oh, we have a lot of uh, children here who speak X. And so let's right. focus on that. It really is about challenging all students for to a learn new a language. different language, yeah, something so. different. Just, I mean, if you think about equity and mm -hmm. you think about um, how we honor all voices, mm -hmm. it just gives students another way to look at um, someone may speak a different language, yeah. but it is something unique and wonderful about them mm -hmm. and giving them, that's something I never did was learn another language, <laughs> but our students are learning mm -hmm. a different language and that's something that they can carry with them through life. And they're probably also learning that in many other countries, mm -hmm. it's very common for children when they're 12 years old to mm -hmm. speak two and three languages. Yes. So really challenging yeah. them to be uh, internationally and globally mm -hmm. uh, ready for the world. Uh, so when you think about uh, world culture and language, do you have a favorite memory from any of the classes you've been in or what you've oh my seen? Goodness. So um, one of my favorite modules that I saw in action, it's called a uh, fashion show. Okay. So we take them through um, the design process for mm -hmm. a client okay. to create a fashion item so that's their choice. It could uh -huh. be a purse, it could be a jacket, it could, whatever they would want um, for a client uh -huh. um, from a different region. And um, at the end, we do a fashion show. And we literally, this teacher rolled out the red carpet uh -huh. and they were able to model what they created and they described it in target language. Uh -huh. okay. And before the break, you talked about the difference between maybe a pre-K, what they're learning, and global uh, study versus this one. Anything you want to highlight of uh, some examples of differences? 
So in World Culture and Language, again, we start with that very sensory experience because that's what's appropriate for their age. In kindergarten, we move into modules where we focus on, um, when we think about target language, um, colors, shape, size, those are all words that we could help them learn in a different language. Um, then we move on to like celebrations and family. Mm -hmm. um, in the older grades, uh, I, I talked about the fashion unit, but then we also think about um, nature and how nature changes and how we can describe things. Mm -hmm. So thinking about uh, all those connections and getting kids ready, as we know that our blueprint goal is, of course, to um, ensure our students are college and career and community ready. Yes. Uh, make a couple more connections there about how this experience for our children really does support them and in, in their growth and their goals uh, related to, to CCR. Definitely. Um, one of the most recent experiences, I'm thinking about a community event that just happened where um, our teacher, wonderful teacher from Manor View, uh, she has a Tai Chi fan dance club. Uh -huh. And they were um, in the community at the Mead Cluster and they did their dance mm -hmm. for them. So that's one way that we, you know, try and expand to the community. Um, I'm trying to think. I think just being able to explore a different language in uh -huh. this way, it also helps students see that they could do this in middle school yeah. and they can take it to high school. And uh, it's just an opportunity that's not afforded to all. All right. Um, it wasn't when I was a child. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. So, but knowing that Tripoli is at every school, um, it's okay that they're different, right? The themes oh gosh, are different because yes. it's those skills. And you want to it's, talk about some of the skills and that. I know so, there's a continuum that we yeah. work with our kids so on. Even though we have four different themes throughout the county, mm -hmm. all of them are project-based learning. Mm -hmm. All of them have this that same model of taking them through a process to get um, to an end result. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, our all of our modules align to a success skill. Mm -hmm. So, we constantly come back to what does it mean to communicate with others? What does it mean to collaborate? And then each day as we have students, at the end of each day, we ask them to reflect on a continuum. Mm -hmm. And that that's just, you know, <laughs> our teachers do it different ways. It's just where do you feel you are um, with creativity in that moment? Are you still learning? And then getting students to express what they did that day uh -huh. and where are they in relation to the goal? Having them be like very reflective about their learning mm -hmm. is is part of our goal. Awesome. That sounds great. Um, I know that we recently went to Manor View to do a little bit of video uh, yeah. recording. I was about to say taping. That shows how old I am. Uh, so we're gonna uh, watch that video in just a second. Do you want to set it up a little bit? What are the What oh, are we gosh. gonna see? So um, our teacher, Miss. Huh, okay. is wonderful. So Mandarin is the, the focus language, the uh -huh. target language. Uh -huh. And what you're going to see is um, she will introduce uh -huh. the success skill. They're going to play a game in relation to the success skill. And then at the end, they'll debrief with the continuum. All right. That sounds great. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and hear from our teacher and students from uh, Manor View Elementary about their Tripoli experience. All right, Xiao Hao. How about we start to introduce ourselves? Um, hello, everybody. Ni hao. I'm Miss He, He Lao Shi from Manor View. And here's my wonderful third grade students. And of course, all of them are wonderful. Those are some representatives from Miss Awards class. Can we start from Daylin? Um, my name is Daylin. My name is Neela. Okay. My name is Daniel. Wonderful. And I actually had them since first grade, and they've been wonderful in my class. So because you guys had my class for so long, can you guys tell me what do you enjoy the most about my class? I love how we always do fun, like, challenges and create so much stuff. It's really fun. Oh, good point. What about Neela? Same as Daniel, but I just want to add, um, I like a lot of these games because it's not 
just regular games that we do on a regular basis. It's games that are kind of different. Like unique. Oh, yes. in a very unique way. Yeah. Wonderful. What about Daniel? I like audit games and they're really fun. Mm -hmm. And they like include a lot of strat strategy and skills. Mm, that's a really good point, because that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to design the games for a purpose, not just only for fun, but also we're going to try to improve your skills, like the 21st century successful skills that we were talking about. So as you guys are saying, Triple E class is quite different from other class. Can you guys be more specific about what are the difference that you guys noticed through the projects or any other like interactive activities that we've done before? Um, I like the, the, um, the play game because it teaches us how to communicate, communicate with other people and um, how to like learn how to play fairly. Mm -hmm. And some of the other games they, in different classes, they don't really teach us that. Oh, you mentioned the spirits, right? Mm -hmm. How to play fairly, and are we trying to encourage each other during the game as well. What about Nila? Um, I liked the um, the paper plate game too mm -hmm. because it helped us communicate and um, use our brains to think of many ways to communicate. That's very good. I like how you recall back on what we're talking about, like the variety of ways of communication. What about Daniel? Um, like all of the games you make for us and like all of the activities are like really fun. And like all the other classes do different things, but um, the activities, activities and games you um, uh, um, like let us do, like teach us more. Oh, so it's like more in depth? Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm glad I had that pleasure to create the games like that for you guys. Um, I think my next question is because my Triple E class is focused on word language and culture, what does that mean to you guys about learning another culture? Um, it's unique because I've never learned this co culture before and it's fun because um, we have different like language that some people don't really use in this school, but you teach us how to use it, so most people know how to use it in the school now. Oh, so we have another new way of communication because m m all the students at Manor View learning Chinese. So when you guys walk down the hallway and see Miss Ross board, you guys will see how to express your feelings in Chinese, things like that. What about Nila? Learning new cultures is like, it's learning what they play with, mm. learning what they build, what they make, their customs. You have a really nice reflection on what we did last year. We learned unexpected fun. We learned how different countries people create games in different ways, right? So we are learning through that entertain entertainment, right? Daniel, what about you? Um, I like learning um, the, um, the Chinese language because like it's really fun and then like, I get to speak a new language. Mm. How many languages do you guys speak right now? Like, um, three. Three, Does wow. Does Chinese count? Yeah. Yeah. Chinese count. Of course they count. So can you guys think about the skills and strategies and the, all the different things that we learn in the triple E class? Is there anything that you guys can think about will help you mostly like outside of the classroom as well? Um, so helping us outside of the classroom so like if someone speaks like a different language than us, we would know how to speak it because um, it would be like if they speak the same language as you and you would teach us, we would know how to talk to them and communicate to them. Mm. Um, so we would be able to be like friends and talk to them together and we wouldn't have to like she would have to learn, that person wouldn't have to learn my language. I would already know her language. Mm. Good point, we're expanding our community. What about Nila? Um, something that helps us outside of class is those pictures, like you put up in our classroom, there's like a few spaces 
and you put like um there's like these posters where you put the Chinese word and then the regular word oh. and it's on your desk uh-huh. in the um mint in the room uh-huh oh okay do you mean that that could be like a signal to help you guys to learn the language oh i see i was thinking same thing as nila oh cool i like how you guys are helping each other on that i think my last question for you guys is that what is kind of like suggestion wise that you guys would like us to think about in the future what can i do to help you guys grow and be like more um independent learners is there anything Um, that you wish we could do not really because i think um mandarin class is um great and i think it's perfect just the way it is oh thank you that's very nice of you i'm always look for improvement but that's very nice of you to say that what about nila um there's really nothing i'd change about it Okay. What about Daniel? She's really, really good, so I don't want to like change. <laughs> <laughs> just one. stay as it is. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you guys feel it's pressure too good. to just say it like that. I will just put like a secret mailbox next to my door. Like you guys just can say, "Hey, Misa, can you do this, please?" You know. And feel free to tell me what you guys think I can improve because I'm always open to advice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we can just tell everybody that. Um, is curious about our program. One thing that you love the most about our program? Um, all the games and how it teaches us to um, like speak the, your language, and it like teaches us that we can also speak different languages, and it's not bad mm-hmm. to speak other languages. Mm. So you are thinking about the equity and diversity piece. Good job, Daily. What about Nila? Um, one thing that is good is we get to learn a different language that um, we've never learned before or that we already know. And it's, I like that it's different from other classes because we learn things on top of games, but in other classes it's just that we, um... It's either we do just do games or we just learn things. Oh, you like how I integrate the language culture part with the games that I'm creating for you guys. Hmm. Pretty good. I feel like I need a badge for that. Thank you so much. What about Daniel? Like, I like how, like, so, like, when you learn a new language, it's, like, uh, like you, um, it's not really, like, fun at all. But, like, um, you just let us play games. And then, like, while we play games, we learn new stuff and new languages. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I think that's it for today's interview. And you guys did a wonderful job. Can you guys say 你真棒 to each other? 你真棒. It's not easy, I know. But today is one of our landmark, right? It's our milestone that we talk about how we like it, how we can improve. And what's cool about Triple E. Thank you guys so much. So thank you. It looks like the kids and our teachers love the experience of our uh, Triple E program there at Manor View Elementary. So I want to thank you again, Tara Rose, for joining us today. And I want to thank you for watching and learning more about the Triple E program here in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. See you next time on Community Connections.